So the Dragon Quest 35th anniversary event has come and gone. Square Enix held a live stream full of announcements and we even live reacted to it on the channel with some good turnout and lots of great reactions. It was overall a good showcase. During the live stream, Yuji Horii made 6 different game announcements. I really enjoyed some of these announcements and believe it or not, I didn't really care for much for some of them too. Today I'm going to be ranking these 6 announcements in order of my least favorite to my favorite. Of course this is just my opinion so it's okay if you disagree. Let me know in the comments what your ranking is too, I'd love to hear it. Let's begin. So at the bottom of my list is Dragon Quest X version 6. Now it may come as a bit of a surprise, but believe it or not, I'm actually not very invested in Dragon Quest X at all. I haven't played it a little bit here and there, but I don't own a subscription. I'm just not interested in playing a Japanese MMO that will never be localized. This is the one Dragon Quest game I haven't beaten yet, and it's because Square Enix hasn't localized it yet. This part of the conference really was not directed to me or other Western Dragon Quest fans. In the corner, they even had a little disclaimer saying that they're not localizing DQ10, which to me is sort of a message to people who are expecting it and wondering where the 10 was, not to get their hopes up or anything. So version 6 is the newest entry, the newest uh, update to Dragon Quest 10, the newest story update. And being somebody who hasn't played much of 10, it really didn't mean anything to me. It's not something that got me excited at all, and it doesn't seem like something I would see myself playing in the future, unless they localized it, which I don't really expect ha to happen because of the message that they gave us. So yeah, this is a announcement I just did not find very interesting, and it's just something that wasn't really directed at me, so that's why it's at the bottom of my list. Alright, the next game is Dragon Quest Keshi Keshi, the bejeweled Candy Crush Dragon Quest clone that they announced at the beginning of the conference. It's the first game they announced of the night. I'm not super interested in this, but it looks like something I might play just to kill time. They didn't show any gameplay, they just showed a trailer with these cute little little eraser guys jumping around and fighting bad guys, and it was very cute, but it was just very silly and not something that I'm just not, it's not something I'm very interested in. Uh, I knew they would announce something like this. I knew going in that they would announce some sort of little mobile game that I just wouldn't care about. It wouldn't appeal to me at all. And this is that game. It's just something I don't really see myself playing for a long period of time. It's just something that, you know, they kind of slapped the Dragon Quest label on and, you know, just got it to get DQ fans into the game. But it's not something that I'm personally interested in. I only really care about the RPGs in this series. The spin-offs just don't really do it to, for me that much, and uh, they're nice for people who are into them, but they're just not something that interests me a lot. I, I might try it out if they if they are localizing it, they announce that they're localizing I might try it out, but it's not something I'm going to be playing like uh, obsessively. That's that's just uh, how it is for me. So that's why I'm ranking Dragon Quest Keshi Keshi as my second least favorite announcement of the night. Now uh, up next is Dragon Quest X's offline version. That is the this is the rumored game that a Dragon Quest X producer actually rumored several years ago. Basically, this is the entire story of Dragon Quest X without all the MMO multiplayer features. It's an offline version, single player that you can play by yourself. It has this cutesy kind of chibi looking art style. It looks a lot different than the original Dragon Quest X, and it actually looks better. I think uh, the environments look a lot nicer because. The original Dragon Quest X had these uh, very simple textures. It was a Wii MMO. It wasn't a very high-tech game. It's over 10 years old at this point. It's almost 10 years old at this point. And uh, the the new one, it looks nice. It has a nice little art style. It might get some taking uh, some getting used to, but I think people will enjoy this. And I do think it's going to get localized. I think there's a higher chance of this getting localized than the online version. And I feel like this is basically made for Western fans. And I do expect to see it come over. It's sort of, to me, it's meant to like fill in the gap in Western players' collections because up until now we have Dragon Quest 1 to 9 and then we have 11. So this is like Square Enix's way of saying, all right, here is the way for you to experience Dragon Quest X's story so you know the whole Dragon Quest story. Uh, when the, If this comes out in the, the West, I will very likely play it. I will likely buy it and I'll likely play it. I'm not sure how great it will be, but uh, it, I, it looks very promising. I'm just worried that we didn't see any combat. They didn't really show any of that. They showed mostly exploration. They kind of just showed the story elements. But I do have high hopes for this. I hope it's a good way to experience Dragon Quest X's story. And so far, it looks like the best way that Western players will be able to play in the foreseeable future. So I'm uh, very optimistic about this and I'm looking forward to it. All right, so the next game I want to talk about after this is Dragon Quest Treasures. This is the 
Eric and Mia spin-off game. It's a prequel to Dragon Quest XI, starring Eric as a kid. When he was a kid, him and his sister, they would go off to this new world and they like look for treasure. They don't they didn't really tell us a lot about the game. They said that it's like an RPG, but it doesn't really play like a typical RPG. So to me that's very curious. Now this was originally supposed to be a Dragon Quest Monsters game, but they scrapped the monsters element of it and they turned it into something entirely new. So this is like a treasure hunting game. Though we don't really know much about the game because they didn't show us a lot of gameplay. They showed Eric and Mia with these monster companions helping them uh, traverse the land and look for treasure. It looks very nice. It has nice like cell shaded kind of graphics. It, lo it looks uh, like some. It looks like a good spinoff. But uh, I'm interested in hearing more. They didn't really show off a lot about it, and it, it, it does look like something I would try out. I'm not super hyped for it because again, they didn't really sell me on it with some sort of crazy gameplay or anything like that. It was very basic what they showed. They showed a lot, of, a little bit of story, a little bit, tiny bit of gameplay, but not much more than that. But other than that, the idea of a Dragon Quest XI prequel, going back to this world, this lore, it, it's, it's just something that I'm interested in. And it's definitely something I would pick up. So it, when this comes over, I'll definitely give it a try. I'm very interested in this. And yeah, that's uh, where I rank Dragon Quest Treasures. Now for second place, this one might surprise you a little bit. My second place ranking in this uh, Dragon Quest 35th anniversary stream is Dragon Quest XII The Flames of Fate, the newest entry in the Dragon Quest series. Now I pr you probably thought this might be number one, and let me explain. What we got was a very short teaser trailer with only the logo shown, a man's voice, and not much else. We were told that this is like the new different kind of Dragon Quest game. But we didn't really see any gameplay, we didn't see any characters, screenshots, we saw practically nothing. They barely told us anything about this game. And I couldn't help but come away from this a little bit disappointed by the tease. I expected something. I knew Dragon Quest XII was going to get announced that night, but I didn't think we were, they were going to, you know, tease us this much. I thought we were going to see a little more than what we saw. I thought we were going to see at least a screenshot or gameplay or a character or something. But no, they didn't really show anything. The most we got was Yuji Horii talking about it afterwards, explaining a little bit about the game, talking about how it's like a, a more, more mature Dragon Quest, about how you make choices, and to me that's very intriguing, but I expected a little more. Uh, we don't know the console, we don't know how the main character looks like, we don't know what the gameplay is like. I, I really would have liked to see more. Just the fact that Dragon Quest XII exists though, that that's enough for this to make its way to the second place in this list just the fact that we saw the logo we heard these things about it that's enough to make me excited i'm super excited to find out more about dragon quest i hope it shows up at another conference soon hopefully but before the end of the year i hope we see more gameplay i'm like super excited for this uh, i'm beyond excited for dragon quest 12 but i really wish they had shown us more than what they've shown and uh i just hope to see more about from this from this game now with that out of the way my number one choice for the night, of course, is Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake, the, the latest remake of Dragon Quest 3. To me, this is the best announcement of the night. This is absolutely the top pick. I've already talked about Dragon Quest 3 before in my top five Dragon Quest games video for newcomers. I told everyone about how this is a really good RPG. It's timeless. It's it's old. It's old. It came from the 80s. It's a 1988 game, but it felt it feels so much ahead, more ahead of its time than it really is. It just doesn't get old. It's, there's so much replayability. It's so fun. There's so many different runs you could do. And just the idea of Dragon Quest 3, this classic game, being brought into modern day with a new remake by the Octopath Traveler developers make this, making this beautiful game with amazing sprite work, amazing graphics, uh, you know, great gameplay mechanics. I think this is absolutely the most uh, exciting announcement of the night. Like, there's nothing that comes close to this. This is so exciting and I think more people should uh, be more excited for this as well. This has potential to be the definitive version of one of the best games in the series. It's the same great game, but with a brand new look. And we saw plenty of gameplay footage for this also. It wasn't like the Dragon Quest XII reveal where we just barely saw anything. We have not much to go off of. We know that it's getting a worldwide release, very likely coming out soon. We've seen the gameplay, the pixel art is amazing. The graphics are amazing, the lighting, the particle effects. It just looks so, so good. And I can't help but be extremely hyped for this. 
This is currently my most anticipated video game of the entire year. I Nothing comes close. And it's crazy because this is a remake of a game I've already beaten. But the idea of just going back to Dragon Quest 3 with this new graphical style, the new music, just everybody getting into it, talking to friends about it, it, it just it gets me so hyped up for this. So this absolutely is my favorite announcement of the night hands down and i am just really really excited for this so i hope they show off more of this very soon i hope this comes out maybe this year or early next year i want to get my hands on this as soon as possible this game looks so awesome and i think this absolutely was the best part of the night so that's it that's my ranking of the dragon quest 35th anniversary announcements there were really just two games that interested me a lot there were dq12 and dq3 remake with DQ3 Remake being the game that, to me, stole the entire show. It was amazing. It looked amazing. It's so exciting that Dragon Quest 3 is being remade. I'm so unbelievably excited for this. And uh, I think you should, too. So, yeah, that's that's my ranking. Uh, do you agree with it? Do you have a different opinion? If you do, let me know in the comments. Tell me what how you would rank the Dragon Quest 35th Anniversary announcements. I would love to hear about that. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.